All right, welcome back. We've got an earnings update for NVIDIA quarter three. Let's get into it. We're gonna start off with the chart. We're looking at the weekly chart here and we've all seen the NVIDIA chart quite the rise these last couple of years. Hard to believe that at the beginning of 2024, NVIDIA was 40 bucks and now it's 140. So pretty unbelievable. Um, when we look at the weekly chart, Pretty ugly looking candle here, uh, so we'll see what happens uh, these next few weeks. But uh, it's still, it was a muted move for the earnings. So we really didn't go anywhere. We had a manipulation move up and that was sold off. So it did get an all-time high of 152, but that did not hold at all. So let's go ahead and take a look at the numbers. So it's another blowout quarter for NVIDIA. And as I mentioned, flat stock move um, on the earnings. So here we got a nice graphic up. And this past quarter, $35 billion in revenue for the last three months. Pretty unbelievable. That's a 17% increase quarter over quarter. And that is a gross, mar or gross profit of $26 billion. Um, mostly data center. So 30 and 31 billion in data center revenue and that all equals a gross or a net profit of almost 19 billion dollars and that is up um, pretty much flat quarter over quarter <clears throat> so when we look at the revenue breakdown and this is why the chart has gone bananas we've talked about this before in previous quarters um, but they're not slowing down here uh, another growth quarter unbelievable to be able to continue to grow at these large numbers here so uh, again the stock is justifiably so shooting straight up because look at the revenue shooting straight up so congratulations nvidia another just outstanding quarter again mostly data center here a little bit of gaming and a little bit of other uh here's just another breakdown it's mostly compute it's mostly the semis, the compute, a little bit of the networking, and then not a whole lot of the other stuff here. But just again, $31 billion for the data center. Unbelievable. So when we look at some of the highlights, um, we talked about it. Uh, data center up 70% quarter over quarter. Revenue up 70% quarter over quarter. And the revenue is up 94% year over year. So almost doubling the revenue year over year, and they beat the expectations by $2 billion. So the expectations have been sky high for NVIDIA because they keep just dominating quarter over quarter, and they're still beating the estimates. So that's that's just kudos to them. They're doing a really, really good job. One of the best run businesses that we have here um, in America. And when we look at the gross margin of 75% gross margin, 62% operating margin, so no real expansion of the margin here and they do have some new products coming on board that is causing that growth in the margin to slow down which makes sense it costs money to produce new products um, their operating cash flow was almost 18 billion dollars at a 50 percent margin and their free cash flow was about 17 billion dollars so again just they have more cash than what they know um, to do with so that is causing their balance sheet to be phenomenal. 40 billion in cash, 9 billion in debt, excellent. Um, let's see here, guidance for the next quarter, $37.5 billion, that is a 7% increase quarter over quarter. So again, we're seeing the growth start to slow down just a little bit, but they're still growing and they're growing at these large numbers, which is great. And their margin isn't getting eroded away rapidly. We do see a little bit of a drop in the in the margin for next quarter. Again, from what I took away from the earnings call, that is going to be a little bit of the supply chain issues that they're having with the new chips that are coming on board. So um, let's take a look here. The key segment updates, data center, 88% of revenue. We talked about it. The growth drivers, the hopper GPUs are double digit in billions for revenue. That's great. Um, we are seeing the cloud consumer, cloud service providers contributing 
over 50% of the data center revenue with Amazon, Microsoft, Oracle. They're all buying up NVIDIA chips, however much they can get their hands on. Um, let's see here. Gaming was okay. It wasn't, um, it wasn't a great quarter for gaming, but it wasn't a, a slump. It was just whatever. There wasn't a whole lot to talk about when it came to gaming. Now, the automotive, they're, they're seeing new customers being onboarded with new electric vehicles integrating the um, AI-driven cockpit solutions that NVIDIA has. So they're a big player in the full self-driving or in the uh, autonomous driving as well. So they're going to be the ones that are supplying the third parties that are going to be competing against Tesla. So that'll be interesting to see how that continues to develop. Now, the Blackwell chips, this is going to be their new chips that are going to, I believe they're replacing the Grace Hopper. So this is going to be the next new series for NVIDIA. And the initial production ramp is exceeding expectations. They're pretty excited about this. I believe I heard them say on the earnings call that the Blackwell chips cost 40% more than the Grace Hopper. And with more demand, selling more of these new chips at a 40% uh, higher cost, that's good for NVIDIA's earnings for the uh, foreseeable future. Um, they talked a lot about AI, as you would expect, and scaling. Uh, their software service and support revenue is on track to exceed $2 billion annualized. So they're um, also coming in with reoccurring high-margin software revenue. That's great to see. So they're selling the systems, and then they're going to be continuing to sell a reoccurring software solution and also support system to run those systems. So it's kind of like if you buy an iPhone, you're also subscribed to you know whatever services they have you're buying things on the app store apple gets a cut you're in their ecosystem you're once you're in the nvidia ecosystem you're going to keep paying nvidia to stay in that ecosystem um it was pretty interesting hearing jensen talk on the call he's just all-star ceo um and they were talking a lot about the new data centers that are being formed and he does a great job of explaining why people are buying all of NVIDIA's chips. And um, a great way to think of it is he was explaining how right now when we code things, that needs to be done on CPUs. But when you're using AI-enabled features, that needs to be done on GPUs. So that's why the data centers need to completely uh, be reconfigured into not just CPU, but the addition of GPUs. And so um, he talked a lot about these AI factories that have the potential to be running 24 7. So if you think about a factory that is pulling orders for Amazon or making a widget, those are at the mercy of humans to come in and turn on the machines and load the machines with whatever materials and, you know, keep things moving. But when you have the potential for robotics to autonomously do these actions, you could have these factories running 24 seven, which is really kind of mind blowing to really think about um, the productivity gains that we could see from this. So if you have Amazon warehouses fulfilling orders 24 seven, the productivity is going to be through the roof. And then eventually not just fulfilling the orders, loading the trucks and then driving the trucks and then dropping the packages off. That's just a simple example, but even just think about manufacturing a product. If we're in a pandemic and we need the M95 masks, but we can't get them, but you have a factory that can all of a sudden turn on and run 24 seven and, and supply that demand, we could quickly get out of bottlenecks and that is good for the consumer, that is good for the economy, that's good for everybody. So pretty interesting. Um, I did think it was also very interesting the uh, parallels that they were talking to with the iPhone and mobile and he was drawing the parallel to hey we're creating new markets we're, we're opening these entirely new markets similar to how when the iPhone came around then we had all of the the mobile first apps that just came out of nowhere so you had games you had okay, I have an app that's on the computer, but now I need to put it on a phone so everyone can use it. 
And so that's a whole new market that is just being opened up. And that's, again, that creates jobs, that creates revenue, that creates a lot of things. So he is drawing the comparison when it comes to the things that are coming from AI. Because right now we're just building out the infrastructure for companies to build this, similar to, okay, now we have iPhones, everyone has a computer in their pocket, now what do you do on that computer? So now that everyone's getting equipped with AI, what are people gonna build with the AI? So that's gonna be interesting. Um, and then on the margins, they did talk about how their margin will compress a little bit because of the new Blackwell chips, but they do see in the near future, once the supply chain opens up for them a little bit more, um, the, that margin to normalize again. Uh, they talked a little bit about geopolitical stuff. They said, we don't know. We're going to be uh, keeping our eyes and ears out for what happens with tariffs and things like that. But they are going to um, roll with the punches and do the best they can. So they'll be fine. Regardless, it may affect their bottom line. It may not. We will have to wait and see. Um, demand for Hopper and Blackwell outpaces supply. That's always good news. And they did talk a lot about their global partners. That is something I am going to do some research on these next few weeks and see who are the big suppliers for NVIDIA. I know Supermicro, they talked about Micron. What are the other companies that create little components for these Blackwell chips and the Grace Hopper? Because they seem to be um, have the potential to have stable earnings for the foreseeable future along with NVIDIA. So as NVIDIA keeps growing, their suppliers are going to keep growing uh, revenue as well. Competition. AMD is their largest competition and they're just still they're not they're not taking any market share from them. We've talked about that in the past. The whole pie is growing. If AMD is taking 10% of the pie, they're not taking more of the pie. They're just the, they're taking the same 10%, but the pie is growing. Uh, so they're not eating into Nvidia's demand. The whole pie is growing. Um, until we start to see Nvidia's share start to shrink and the competitors start to take some of that away from them. Uh, there's no real competition out there. And I would say the, the other large potential for competition is going to be in-house solutions that it, and that could impact NVIDIA's long-term revenue. So that's longer term. So Amazon, Google, um, Microsoft, these companies are wanting to make their own chip so they don't have to rely on just NVIDIA, but they're not there yet. Um, so we will have to wait and see how soon are these companies going to be turning on their own chips. I know Amazon is close. Google has some chips. Um, but that's just to increase the total supply. They're not, they're not just relying on their own chips yet. So similar to how Apple makes their own chips now, they don't rely on Intel. When is that going to be the case for NVIDIA? Um, <clears throat> so some of the growth opportunities. Sovereign AI is very interesting to me. So if you are Saudi Arabia and you want to have your own AI data centers, you're not going to run your AI models on a data center in San Jose, California. No, you're going to make your own data centers in your own uh, country. So it's under your control and you're going to be programming your own AI models and things like that. And NVIDIA is going to be the ones that are going to help these companies build their own data centers. Similar to how, uh, I believe it was Twitter, bought a bunch of NVIDIA chips and instantly built their own data center for themselves. Instead of renting out space in someone else's data center, they're saying, we're going to build our own. That's what these nation states are going to do as well. They don't want to pay someone in another country to run their AI and then something happens geopolitically and ties get severed. They're going to just run their own uh, data centers and they're going to build their own data centers so they know that it's secure and they'll always have access to it. So that's very interesting. Um, you know, robotics, we talked about it, but the other part that I think is going to be a big piece of next year is going to be the rise of AI agents. I will talk more about that in future videos as we see more examples of it. But you could think of Siri is going to be people's personal AI agent. You're going to say, hey, Siri, you know, book this reservation at this um, restaurant. Hey, Siri, send a text message. Siri sucks right now. But when what happens when Siri is going to be very good and you're going to be able to have multiple AI agents to do multiple tasks for you? Um, so it's not going to be as simple as Siri, but that is a simple example that everyone understands. Uh, but it'll be able to do more complex tasks for you as well. 
so that's going to be, I think, the next thing that we see that really blows people's mind like ChatGPT did originally. Um, so buybacks. So NVIDIA has more cash than they know what to do with. They know what to do with the excess cash. So in quarter three alone, they did buy back $11 billion in shares. Huge buyback. That's that's a lot. Um, so that is really my big highlights for the earnings a great quarter um now let's take a look at this graphic here we're looking at the valuation of nvidia amd microsoft and apple so nvidia is the most rich of these four companies at a 51 forward pe so that is much higher than an amd at 41 and a microsoft and apple that are around 31 but those companies are not growing at the pace that Nvidia is growing. Just unbelievable growth. So it's it's not it's not that crazy because they're you're paying for this growth. I'm going to pay a premium for a company that keeps growing like this until it starts to slow down and go the other way and we see the competition coming. Um, but quarter after quarter, I have not seen that. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And so um they talk so much about the demand for the Blackwell chips. If there were competition, there wouldn't be as much demand for those chips. So I, I have a funny feeling that NVIDIA is going to see $5 billion before the competition can really put a dent in them. And so a $5 billion market cap, I'm sorry, $5 trillion market cap for NVIDIA puts my price target at around $203. So... That is what I am looking to see NVIDIA get to sometime in the next year. Um, now, I don't know if we go back down to 120, 100 before we get back up there. Uh, I have no clue. Something geopolitical can happen. Something in the, in the news can happen. Um, so um, I have not done anything with my shares. I don't have calls. I don't have puts. I just own stock and I don't want to sell calls to cap my upside here. Uh, once we get to that $200 mark, I will revisit the story and look to see if I want to take some profits or if I want to sell some calls. But until we get there, I am just holding stock and I will accumulate on the dips. My next buy target is going to be in the 127, so under 130. That'll be my next dollar cost average for NVIDIA. Uh, if the premiums get juicy, I may look to sell some puts. Or maybe sell some way out of the money calls to finance the purchase of um, some other option to get some upside. But other than that, I'm just staying put. I'm going to be holding this company until the story changes or we hit that $5 trillion market cap. We are currently at $3.5 trillion. So we got another 40% to go until we get to my price target. So I will have to wait and see. Uh, what happens first either the competition comes roaring at them which looks unlikely in the near future for at least the next couple of years um, or we we shoot up to that price target nvidia does tend to have a very strong end of the year seasonally so maybe we get a nice santa claus rally and get back over the 150 maybe we don't i don't know but very strong quarter, quarter for nvidia and um, we will look forward to their next earnings in February. So that's all I got for you guys. Congratulations, NVIDIA holders. The story is stronger than ever. So that is all I got for you guys. Have a great weekend and peace out.